I have a lot of pretty rare pieces in my Apple collection at this point, but what we're going to unbox today, right here, that's something pretty special. Now, 1990s Apple had some relatively unusual ideas, and I've covered some of them here on the channel before. But this one from 1995, it may just take the cake. At the time, the personal computer market was exploding, and Apple, despite its problems, was selling a fair number of Macs. And the company decided to go a little bit broader, and they partnered with Bandai on a gaming platform. They called it the Pippin. And it didn't sell very well, and I've actually never seen one except uh, through glass in a museum, so I'm super excited to have one here. A big thanks to Chris, who sent me this. He had it, it had been sitting in his parents' house forever, and apparently they wanted to get rid of it, so uh, here it is. Advanced Technology by Apple Computer. So advanced that these games ran on CD-ROMs, and on the CD, Apple bundled a copy of the system folder. This thing runs Mac OS, a very uh, slow and old version of it. So this comes with all of the manuals, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's got information about games. Uh, let me read you some specs from the Pippin. A Power PC. 603 operating at 66 megahertz, five megabytes of RAM expandable to 13, it's a little bit of an odd number, uh, four megabytes of ROM for the OS kernel, 128 kilobytes of flash for non-volatile storage, eight and 16-bit color, and there was an option to switch between NTSC and PAL on this thing, which is pretty nice. 10-bit stereo audio input and output, front-loading CD-ROM, two ADB jacks. Now, that name should be familiar to you. That's the same connector Apple used on the old Macs with the keyboards and mice. They use these for the Apple Jack devices. We'll get into this box in a minute. I'll show you those controllers. Really pretty bad. Standard uh, Apple serial interfaces for, uh, for printer and modem support. I don't know why you need a printer on a game console, but common sense is sort of out the window when you talk about the Pippin. Uh, and then an internal power supply. A few moments later. Remember, this is basically a little Macintosh. And so all those specs earlier, it shares this with Macs of the era, or Macs a little before the era, I should say. This is the device itself. So this is the console. You can see the logo here. Uh, we've got uh, ports in the front, media controls across the top, power button, play, stop, volume, uh, forward and back, and then eject. And around back, uh, power, fan, uh, audio and video, uh, serial down here again for a printer or a modem, and a VGA. So you could actually get up to a VGA monitor as well and then your switch to move between the different video modes. Uh, so. There is the Pippin itself. Box number two is labeled accessories. I'm hoping the Applejack controllers are in here. We got uh, cables and whatnot, you know, standard uh, yellow, red, and white. I'm gonna have to find a TV to hook this up to. And here is one of the controllers. This thing is basically new in box. Uh, again, a huge thanks to Chris for sending this out to me. It's one of those things where some people would leave this in box, but I think it's way more interesting to actually be able to look at it and then take care of it from then on. So here is the Applejack controller. It's sort of shaped like a banana. Uh, you've got a D-pad and some buttons, a wheel in the middle, and uh, two buttons up here to trigger buttons. Uh, already I can tell you this is not very comfortable to hold and I can't imagine that it would be comfortable for long periods of gameplay, but we will find that out together. So uh, Pippin at World Internet Access Number. So this thing you could get on the internet with the modem. 
This card basically gives you all the numbers. These are listed by a state and city here in the United States. Uh, so here in Memphis, let's see if we are listed. Uh, we are, we have two phone numbers here so I could dial in with the modem and get on the internet with my Pippin if it were 1995. Software license and agreement, probably not super important at this point. And then uh, several CDs in here. So we have uh, an interactive encyclopedia, uh, TV registration, some puzzles. Uh, and I should say that this was actually a review unit, so there's some not for resale stuff in here as well. So a retail kit may be slightly different. Uh, telephone accessories, a long cable, and then of course we have the modem built by Motorola, which is pretty common at the time for Apple stuff. Uh, funnily enough, it says computer on this port. It doesn't say Pippin. This was very clearly uh, just uh, relabeled uh, for use with this device. So I have the Pippin hooked up to my TV. And we're going to get it started. Pippin. As you can probably hear, it's uh, it's quite noisy, but it's going to boot up from the CD, which I expect to take a couple of uh, a couple of seconds longer than we're used to by modern console standards. So here we are on the encyclopedia CD. I'm going to go in here and look for some topics. See, I'm just using the cursor with the thumb wheel here. So let's look at Earth. And uh, let's look at um, ocean. Now let's read a little bit about the Great Barrier Reef. So here I can uh, I can scroll down, the scroll bar. I've got print options as well. So I joked about a printer earlier. Apparently this is what you would do. You could print off an article and uh, have it for later. There's an outline mode. You can go in here and see, skip around the different parts of the article. And go back and go home. This disc also includes a dictionary and an atlas and a bunch of other stuff. I'm sure this was novel in 1995, but I can't imagine anyone hooking up a game console and then wanting to read the encyclopedia on it. Like I was, I was a pretty nerdy kid, but that seems a step too far, even for me. So here we have a title, obviously meant for younger kids. A couple interesting things about this CD: the menu bar up at the top looks very much like classic Mac OS. Uh, so we're gonna pick a puzzle here. I can't try to imagine my three-year-old waiting on the CD to load. I, just, I don't see it happening. But I can go in here and I can pick a piece up and I can move it in place. Hey, I did it. Nice use of the Chicago typeface there. I am really bad at video games today, and I'm sure I'm going to be terrible at a video game that's 20 years old. But we're going to get into this together. Wow, I did not expect the gameplay to be stuck inside of a little, a uh, little box. Oh, hello.
Yeah, these gr this is pretty uh, pretty blocky looking. The movement's smooth, and obviously we're doing some upscaling to a, a you know a modern a modern TV size, but um, definitely feels a little little janky. Um, need some more bad guys. Those of you who actually played Marathon back in the day, I'm sure, are just dying in the comments below. Uh, you don't have to do that. I, I know that I'm terrible at video games. Uh, this is not news to me. The Pippin did not open my eyes to this. Oh my gosh, what is happening? Go away! Get out of there. Mario Kart is more my speed than this, than uh, really anything else. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, that's enough. Uh, that's enough gameplay for me. So let's talk a little bit about the Pippin itself. In 1994, Bandai approached Apple about creating an all-new device that would make the company relevant in the console wars of the mid 90s. The idea was pretty simple: take the multimedia richness found on the Mac and partner it with something that could go in the living room, but also bring in things from the internet and educational discs and make them all in one encompassing sort of living room experience. If that sounds a little nuts for 1994, you're right, it didn't sell very well. It was 600 bucks in the United States and they only sold 45,000 units worldwide. The Pippin, as you may imagine, didn't survive the great Steve Jobs calling of products in 1997, although it was supported until 2002, which is crazy to me. This thing is so slow and frustrating to use, I can't imagine people put up with it that long. The Pippin does make me think of Apple today, though. The company is still heavily involved in gaming. Just look at iOS. It's a huge gaming platform, and all this AR stuff in iOS 11 promises to make it a lot more interesting. But in the living room, Apple still struggles. The Apple TV has not become the gaming mecca I think Apple wanted it to be, and the company quite honestly still struggles with little pieces of plastic to put in your hands to control a TV interface. Maybe one day they'll get there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this sort of stuff, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of Apple history stuff here and it's really fun to show off the stuff in my collection. Uh, again, big thanks to Chris for sending me the Pippin. I'm super honored to have it. And until next time, adios.